This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Okay, we gotta continue. We gotta continue. After hanging up on Shion, I searched for Rika's phone number on my school's contact list. <laughs> Baby wants the lock changed, she's marked for death. Well, her changing the lock resulted in this, the family secrets being aired out, essentially. And also, she now knows that uh, we went in and she's trying to protect us. There it is. My fingers trembled of urgency, and I failed multiple times to put in the simple five-digit number. My friend might be dead! I... I shouted angrily at my mother, listening to the dial tone. Pick up! Come on, pick up! The time was 11 p.m. It certainly wasn't early. It was essentially the middle of the night. Had Rika already gone to bed? Probably! Girl needs her beauty sleep. Her phone would be ringing constantly, though, so would she get back up for me? Rika didn't pick up. She didn't pick up. She didn't pick up! Maybe she just happened to miss it. Maybe her bed was just too far away from the phone. The sound of a phone ringing gets clearer and clearer the longer you go on sleeping. Then, the bathroom? Yeah, she must be taking a bath! If that was the case, then even if she heard the phone, she wouldn't be able to pick it up. It was a little late to be taking a bath, but it was possible she normally took baths right before going to bed. I'll wait 30 minutes, then try calling again. Yeah, that's that's a reasonable thing to do. Even as I was thinking that, I called her house over and over again. I kept calling, over and over, again and again. I kept on calling her, but she didn't pick up even once. I think I kept trying for about 30 minutes, yet she wasn't picking up. Were my phone calls so persistent that she had gotten scared of picking up the receiver? No, that couldn't possibly be it. There was no point in doing this any longer. The best thing to do would be to go there in person. Where was Rika's house, though? Shit! I've never even asked her where she lived! Her residence was written there on the contact list, but it was an address with mostly numbers, so I couldn't tell where it was just by reading it. Isn't there a map or something in here? Rika Furade. Her last name was Furade. It was a bit of an odd last name, so it might be easy to find. Thinking that, I rummaged around the drawer of the phone book, but could only find things like takeout menus and phone numbers for public establishments. Shit, shit, shit! I tore one thing out of an uh, after another out of the drawer, but I didn't come up with any clues to where Rika's house was. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. If you don't know, then just ask. Ask someone who does know. I looked up Rena's phone number on the contact list. Rena and Ryugu. There she was. We're gonna get Rena's mom, and she's gonna be like, Who's calling at this hour? <laughs> oh, Rena's dad, never mind. It was the voice of a grumpy sounding man. We probably woke him up. He's, he's right to be grumpy. It must have been Rena's father. I'm calling in the middle of the night. I need to be polite. Oh, he still calls her Reina. Oh, right. Reina Ryugu was her real name, wasn't it? I'd gotten so used to calling her Rena that calling hearing her real name caught me a little off guard. <laughs> this is gonna sound really weird and creepy, but I need to know where Rika's house is so I can visit it at this hour. <laughs> Rena seemed a little appalled that I'd call her for something like this. Th yeah, I don't blame her. This is gonna be hard to explain. This is gonna be really hard to explain. However, she spoke her next words seriously, as if she'd caught on to how urgent my need was. <laughs> I couldn't immediately visualize the place, but as long as I knew she lived on the shrine grounds, I'd just have to take a look around. <laughs> I, I need to know for a thing! 
Rena asked in an unusually sharp way, halting me before I could hang up the phone. I hesitated for a moment about whether to tell her. He was killed because I told him. We don't want to endanger Rena. So he's not going to tell her. Rena affected her usual tone, but beneath her words lay a certain tension, like she'd intuitively sense something going on. Just tell her that she left her homework at school and you have to, like, bring it back to her. If it's Rena, can't I tell her? He was killed because he found out. I revealed everything, so he was killed. Rena asked me once more in a tone so forceful I couldn't imagine her ever using it normally. I was taken aback by her vigor. Rena was Rika's friend, too. She had the right to be concerned about Rika's disappearing. If I told Rena then, even if only for a moment, I could drive away my horrifying fears. Rena's tone was seriousness itself. Just from that tone, I could feel her saying, No matter what you say, KG, I'll believe you. That subtle sense of security gave me the courage to reveal the truth. <laughs> Rena's got a hatchet. She's good. This is very interesting, though. It, this is now quite different from Chapter 1, because in Chapter 1, we were like, can't trust anybody, everyone's out to get us, and now we're, like, kind of getting the whole group involved in this, like, weird conspiracy. It, it's very interesting. I didn't want to tell Rena about this still. I think listening to her calm voice soothed my pointless impatience. Yet I still hesitated. I had told Rika-chan that we had snuck into the ritual storehouse. The mayor, to whom Shion had confessed before that, had already disappeared. So, it was possible that Rika also. I didn't know how to explain it to Rena. While I was tongue-tied, Rena spoke up. Rena laughed a little, seeming a bit absent-minded. I wasn't exactly in the mood to laugh, so this time I was dumbfounded. Rena continued in a cheerful, yet still purposeful voice. If Mion is behind putting Rika in danger, that would be quite a plot twist. That would also be very sad. But here we are. Rena, thank you. リカちゃんの家に電話はしたんだよね。それでどうしても繋がらないから家の場所を聞いてきたんだね。ああ。10分以上は鳴らし続けたと思う。ひょっとしたら気づかなくて寝てるだけなのかも。リカちゃんの家
Shiona just told me to be careful around Mion during our phone conversation a little while ago. If the Sonazaki main house was somehow lurking behind the surface of the annual freak deaths, then the current heir to the family, Mion, wouldn't be uninvolved. So, wouldn't that mean she wasn't uninvolved in what happened this year to Takano and Tomotake and also the mayor's disappearance? That's all Rena said before hurriedly hanging up. Now wasn't the time to be doubting Mion. I needed to make sure Rika was safe. Mion scares me a little bit. But honestly, Mion herself hasn't done anything to make me think she's behind something. It's more just all this conjecture of like, it's probably the Sonozaki family. I'm like, yeah, probably, but also maybe not. I got changed and grabbed the key to my bike. I figured things would go more smoothly if we met up in the place we usually do before school. Rena wouldn't need to come all the way to my house. My parents would probably have objected if I told them I was leaving, so I creeped out without a word. The night was unusually warm and disagreeably humid. She said that Rika and Satoko lived together, right? Huh? Then it wasn't only Rika. Satoko wasn't there either? Realizing what them living together really meant caused my thoughts to immediately take a turn for the worse. That can't be. Satoko is... She's got nothing to do with any of this! Even if there were a reason for Rika to disappear, there shouldn't be one for Satoko. They're just like, man, this girl's annoying. Ketsuka! Hey, girl! Rena was really fast. She approached me on her bike at an amazing speed. Her breath was ragged, painting a clear picture of how hurried we should been going. Oh, Rena. Uh-oh. My parents were asleep. We don't want to tell them. Rena's expression was all business. Was she mad? It came out of the blue and I faltered for a moment. She's like, Keiichi, I know you lied to me and you know how I feel about liars! <laughs> Rena shouted, clearly angry. I'd never seen Rena like this before. Well, technically you have! <laughs> then, yeah! Mio's just studying for exams, and she dealt with a hangover for the first time in her life. Rena seemed to notice she was scaring me, took a couple of deep breaths, then continued as if admonishing me, but her expression didn't soften at all. Keiichi-kun, <laughs> Yeah, it's natural she's gonna be like, what the flippity dip? Rena's got a head on her shoulders! Good job, Rena. I began to understand where Rena's anger was coming from. Yeah, um, about that. Rena was perfectly level-headed in this emergency situation. Ever since the night of the Watanagashi, every night someone had died or disappeared. On the night itself, Takano and Tomotake met strange ends. On the next night, the Elder vanished. Now, on the night after that, Rika and Satoko were nowhere to be found. I hadn't been thinking of anyone but myself, but... It wasn't enough to say that Nina Mizawa was a little weird at the moment. In fact, it was extremely strange. Where was this Rena in Chapter 1? Rena in Chapter 1 went super crazy stalker psychopant. So... That's what happened. She was clear... I don't think she was using her full brain in Chapter 1, so to speak. She read it even anticipated our own disappearances and had told me to tell my family where I was going. I was embarrassed at my own carelessness. And the need to be embarrassed made me afraid of the night. <laughs> With Rena beside me, I wheeled back toward my house. Thank you, Rena. The moon seemed strangely high in the sky. Oh, dude, that's a boss background right there. Oh, that's a good one. A sky that was ve use uselessly vast and cold. So that no matter what, it would never seem to me like a dream. This cruel fact that it already confronted me. <laughs> That's the real thing. Rena's just taking her medication in this one. I'm pretty sure Rena's probably on medication after she broke all of the glass windows in her old school. They're like, yeah! 
<laughs> she has schizophrenia. Here, here are some pills. On such a crazy night, Rena had been unimaginably dependable. Hinamizawa's metamorphosis, enough to make Rena caution me against carelessness, was to me the most fearsome thing of all. The moon seemed strangely high in the sky. You said that! We met up with Miona on the way, and she, of course, was unsure whether to believe me about Rika and Satoko's disappearance. <laughs> I'll be relieved if it's a joke. Miona's clearly displeased. If this were a joke, it wasn't very funny. I understand how indiscreet my words were. Ever since the day before yesterday, someone had either died or vanished every night. Rika and Satoko disappearing after all that was something you just couldn't say, even in jest. Ren is very understanding. So then, eh? Oh wow! Dang, they did their math on this one. <laughs> See, Mion doesn't seem like she's crazy. If if she is, she's hiding it pretty well. However indiscreet a joke may have been, if we learned that our friends were safe, it would end up as nothing more than a funny story. Having been warned about that by Rena, Mion gave a dry smile. The tension she felt loosening a bit. She mounted her bicycle as well. Our free bicycle's lights flashed down the pitch-black roads. They were some of the only illumination outside. Uh, um, Jack-o'-lantern! <laughs> Mion asked me about the same thing that I had trouble explaining to Rena. I couldn't quite tell it because it was dark, but I thought I could see Mion smiling very ambiguously. I definitely understood that she wasn't convinced, though, despite the darkness. Oh, <laughs> It's more than a feeling. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. I smoothly babbled out of my mouth. Makes makeshift though they were. This is literally the best lies he's told. I was lying because I thought telling them I was connected to Shion would be like silently admitting we'd stolen into the ritual storehouse together that night. Mion didn't impress me any further. I don't know whether that convinced her. Or maybe she figured that making sure Rika and Satoko were safe would be faster than making an issue out of it. I felt relieved and immediately a little guilty. We're gonna get to the shrine, it's gonna be like, why are there like 20 police cars here? <laughs> That's not good! Mion hadn't really been acting any differently these last few days, but I'm still trying to distance myself from her for some reason. It, it was only because of what I heard from Shion and Uisi-san that she was the successor to some kind of super extravagant gain family. No. Was I just trying to force myself to forget? Don't do that, Keiichi Mabara. Wasn't it... Wasn't it Mion who was the first to ask about the night of Watanagashi? In such a harsh tone at that? Have I already forgotten the terror I felt? At that time, Mion looked like... Someone different from the Mion I knew. When I think about that Mion, then Shion and Uisisad's descriptions of Mion made a tiny bit more sense. Oh boy. That's it, isn't it? If it wasn't for how she acted that day, then I wouldn't be feeling this way towards her now. What on earth was going on with her back then? She thought that we she probably thought we were making out with Shion. I was conveniently thinking only of everything she had done after that, while disregarding the very first thing, the thing I should have been looking at most, wasn't I? Mion was pedaling her bicycle in front of me, her long hair fluttering in the wind. No matter how long I looked at her back, it never gave me any answers to any of my questions. We all went to the, we went all the way to the stone steps leading up to the shrine grounds. Of course we weren't going to haul our bikes up there, so we parked them beside the staircase instead. Everyone 
ここは古出家の立派な私有地なんだよ。Oh, let's do the ultimate move. Just we go by like the creepy shed and we're just like, what's that? I've never seen that before. <laughs> so the entire shrine is private property. It really makes you feel the passage of time. Ten or twenty years ago, it would have looked the exact same. だとすると、古出家って結構な旧家なんじゃないのか。代々続いた由緒ある。うん。ない。おかしいよ。Rena said something clearly to squiet in, so I ran over to her. どうしたレナリカちゃんとサトコちゃんはいつもここに自転車を止めてるはずなの。Uh -oh. ほら、どこにもない。I took a look around. Indeed, there were no other bicycles aside from the ones we'd taken to get here. Well, maybe they may put their bicycles up in the shop. 他の場所に止めてる可能性もあるんじゃない例えば、担いで石段を上がったとか。女の子には無理だよ、ケイチ君。Rena, that's sexist. Just as she said that, I couldn't imagine Rika and Satoko lugging their bikes all the way up here. We hadn't yet knocked on Rika's door, but reality was also already sparkling some ideas that weren't what you'd call good. Maybe they were just parked under some trees and we hadn't noticed them. I refuse to believe that not being able to find their bikes here was proof that they'd disappeared. We all nodded and dashed up the stone steps. We passed through the red arch and came out onto the shrine grounds, which was covered in neat gravel. It was so quiet here as though the Watanagashi festival had never happened. Rana took the lead and sprinted off. We went towards the assembly hall behind the shrine and then looped around behind it. In the darkness of the night, we found a small prefab two story shack that looked like a warehouse. There. That's where they live. Wow. You know? You know? I could see it. I could see it. It's two stories. And they are, there's two of them, and they're both young. That would work. Rena and Mio neared the shack, which didn't really look like a place people would live. No, I, you can make, make do with that. No electricity there, probably, but they had such a beautiful shrine, so I figured they'd live in an equally beautiful house. It was far from what I had expected. Well, they were shrine priests and maidens. Maybe they were trying to live in humble accommodations. Rena shouted up towards the second floor. Her voice was restrained at first, but it steadily grew louder. No answer. In fact, there wasn't any sort of activity in the house at all. Mion banged on the shutter of both hands, and the loud sounds echoed into our surroundings. They would have to notice this much noise. They would have to turn on the light in the room, fling open the windows, and yell, WHAT TIME DO YOU THINK IT IS?! That, however, wasn't happening. There was absolutely no response. Mion stopped slamming her fists on the shutter, and a sudden silence fell over us. The silence aroused terrible thoughts in us. I could feel the blood draining from my face. Rana showed no signs of stopping. It didn't look like she would admit that they weren't there until we went inside and saw for ourselves. That refusal to give in gave me strength. Actually, that's a step ladder. Mion brought over a ladder that was hanging, standing against the house. The footing was a little unstable for me to get climbing to it, but Mion held the ladder firmly in place for me. I hadn't climbed too many ladders. My inexperience of them exposed, I climbed up one step at a time and tried to open each window on the second floor. Rena darted away. What? A main house? It's the big blue house. Yeah, the poor girl. At that point, I recalled something else. Wasn't Satoko living here too? Satoko was a friend. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh 
Did we learn that already? Was that revealed in chapter one? I actually can't remember. Well, I knew about I knew about her older brother, Satoshi. But I can't remember if that was something that they established in chapter one. That like her parents were one of the victims. It probably was one of the names, but I just forgot and didn't make the connection. Okay, so there we are. That's an interesting new connection. I remembered. He was the one who disappeared last year because of the curse. The curtains were drawn, so I couldn't get a good look inside to see, but two young girls living together seemed like a pretty tough life. Yeah, that would be hard. I had no idea. I feel really bad for them. They were normally so cheerful at school that I never even realized an atom of this. Suddenly, Mion said something in such a low voice that it sounded like she was really cursing someone, and I didn't let it slide. <gasps> there it is! There it is! I turned around on the ladder to face her again and asked again. Mion, still holding onto the ladder, brought her head up to me and looked at me in the eyes. Oh no, she's holding the ladder beneath us! Oh, this just got bad. As soon as our eyes met, an absolute jolt of electricity surged through my body. There's the eyes again! Leon's eyes clouded over, and within them boiled and bubbled a stew of chaos. They whirled around like a raging sea, and bubbles floated to the surface. I had at some point been trapped on this ladder, like being cornered on a dead-end street. I intended to follow that up with, you're going too far with this joke, and give her a forced smile. However, on such uneven footing as I was, the only thing that came out of my mouth was a hoarse groan as I desperately struggled to not let nausea overwhelm me. Not Rika, Satoko. Mion answers, with a response to something I never asked, as if replying to somebody else's question. Oh no, were her parents terrible? That would explain why she is a bit of a brat then. Well, this just got interesting. Kesatsuwa Okay, I changed my mind. Maybe Mion is going a little crazy. Okay, I just said that the killer was Satoko as a joke. <laughs> And now Mio's like, no, you, you called it! <laughs> okay, okay, Mion. I heard you the first time. Mion was mumbling words over and over that were no longer coherent. 
Wait, that was what Shion was doing earlier. Her shoulders were trembling so hard that I could feel it through the ladder. Oh, maybe. Maybe. We don't know if Mion was crushing on Satoshi, though. I almost lost my footing, which made me realize just how far away the ground really was. Excuse me. I wasn't even sure if she heard me. Mion rocked back and forth, and that rocking and trembling was becoming even more violent. Help me. The ladder. It's falling! Help me! Help! Ran it to the rescue! Just then I heard the sound of many people running towards us. Help! Help! My girlfriend's twin is trying to kill me! I very nearly said help me outright. Four or five adults led by Rena ran over here with flashlights. Dane, Rena's a real winner in this chapter. Man. Who did you get? You borrowed the key. Oh, hey, she's back to normal. When I heard Mion talking like nothing had just happened, I felt a chill run through me. Okay! The person currently holding the ladder in place. It was definitely Mion. It was the real Mion Sonazaki. Then... The person muttering to themselves. Just a few seconds ago. Who was that? The person who was mumbling about terrible things. Like curses. Who was that? I jumped down from the ladder as if running away before Mion turned into the person who wasn't Mion a second time. The adults tried a few different keys on a key ring as they tried to open the big shutter on the first floor. As long as that scene doesn't spoil anything else in that I haven't encountered yet, then by all means, please paste, please, please post that in the uh, Discord. Oh, so you you got spoiled that Mion went crazy in it? Oh. Darn it. Sorry about that. Oh, score one for Mayor McCheese. Like, I'll check it out uh, when I finish up here. Mion gave me a smile as she said that. I, however, could only return her gaze with an aghast expression. Mion was acting all too normal now, but that only contrasted all the more sharply with her earlier un-Mion-like creepiness. 